Joining us now is Stephen McNeil. He's the leader of the Nova Scotia Liberal Party, and all polls indicate he could also be the province's next premier. Mr. McNeil, welcome to the battleground. Oh, thanks for having me. Well, the NDP is out with its uh, basic election platform today, about $34 million tax dollars uh, worth of spending included there. How soon do you think before we'll see your party's platform? Well, they re released today a one-pager with uh, without any uh, costing on it at all. They've uh, thrown a number out without any uh, thing to substantiate that number. And uh, ironically missing was a $200 million promise to cut the HST by 1%. Uh, so like the last four years, uh, this government is hoping that Nova Scotians will just give them uh, – uh, an opportunity to govern without uh, without uh, being scrutinized uh, like they were last time. Uh, any any word then on the timing of your platform? We'll, when the election is actually called, uh, we will uh, release our platform the first week of the campaign. Now, last week, you know the uh, the the Liberal government, uh, rather, you said that the uh, that a Liberal government would keep the spending commitments that Daryl Dexter had made as Premier. Uh, in the previous weeks, uh, those are that's tens of millions of dollars. Uh, what would that mean for the province's finances, and how could that limit the kind of promises that you can actually make on the campaign trail? Well, actually, what we said was is that if this government has actually made uh, capital commitments to communities, to organizations uh, over uh, the last number of months, we would obviously have to honor those, like previous governments have had to do in the past. Uh, over the last number of months, this government has been making, whether it's from public policy or election promises, we'd have to determine, and then we'd scrutinize those one at a time. Um, but as you know, um, uh, it is uh, when a government makes a, a capital a commitment to a community, whether it's for a piece of public infrastructure, recently our government signed a $34 million deal with uh, TriStar to provide ambulance, or am, new ambulances to people mm -hmm. in the province. We obviously have to keep those commitments. One of the other issues that's very large in Nova Scotia is uh, debt, uh, provincial debt. Uh, now there's a balanced budget, although there's some debate about that, in, uh, in Nova Scotia and, and a little surplus. Will you come up with a detailed long-term debt repayment plan for the province? Well, clearly, there's no debate about whether it's the budget is balanced. The, bu the budget in Nova Scotia is clearly not balanced uh, by any by anyone's estimation. Uh, if you don't, unless you sit around the cabinet table, every other person looking at this recognizes we're in a deficit position. It's important uh, for the new uh, a new government to uh, get this province back on uh, solid uh, fiscal feet by making sure that we have balanced budgets and then laying out a clear debt repayment plan uh, over the years to come. And, and one final question. I really do have to talk about fracking for natural gas. All three of the major parties oppose it. You want more study. Why should the province, though, wait before developing a, probably a very large resources that, that could bring back a lot of workers that have gone to Alberta? Well, uh, no one is certain, first of all, how much resource is actually in the ground uh, in Nova Scotia. But furthermore, we need to make sure that uh, anything that happens on land is not going to jeopardize uh, the drinking water of Nova Scotians. And uh, we're, uh, at this point, there are no rules and regulations around fracking in the province of Nova Scotia. We've actually called upon this government to, uh, to have a moratorium on it until uh, those regulations can be in place, and then we can have a debate on whether or not it's the right thing for this province or not. Uh, All right. At the same time, though, I must say it's also important to recognize the government put a moratorium on it, but they are accepting waste, fracking waste from our neighboring provinces. That has to stop now and allow other provinces to deal with their own fracking waste. Okay. Uh, Stephen McNeil, I, I did say that was the final question, but I, I did think of one more, almost a Colombo style here. Um, <laughs> When it when it comes to, uh, to to the to the coming election, do you have a prediction of how things are going to go? I know that's dangerous for politicians. No, I, I can tell you we're going to go out and continue to uh, talk to Nova Scotians, try to present our plan, and current, hopefully we can build a team to uh, obviously uh, we want to be the government. I want to be the government of this province. I want to be the premier, and it's important uh, that we take our message to the people. And uh, uh, but at the end of the day. Uh, I will respect the decisions of the voters of the province of Nova Scotia on election night. All right. Mr. McNeil, thanks for your time. Thank you.